time for chapter six. So this is our first organ system that we'll be doing. And this is the integumentary system, which is also known as your skin. So first section, we'll go through the function of the skins, our different layers, and how we have different skin colorings and different skin markings. I think we'll focus just on colorings for at least for the video, because that's what's on your study guide. Okay, so for our skin, so that create our tegumentary system, which made up of our skin, the accessory organs, so hair, nails, and our cutaneous glands, so the glands in our skin like sweat and oil. It's our largest and heaviest organ just because massive surface area ends up with a lot of tissue. So in this tissue, we have three different layers. We have the epidermis, which is our surface area most external one which is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue the dermis which is the deeper connective tissue layer that feeds our epidermis and then our hypodermis which technically isn't considered part of our skin but it's associated with it so to see this in a picture format oops we have at the top, we have the epidermis, that is our epithelial layer, which is the layer that we can see on the outside of our body, the dermis here in the middle, and our hypodermis with all the fat and major blood vessels below it. So hypo as in lower or below the dermis. So for our epidermis, it has four or five layers depending on the type of epidermis all sitting on the basement membrane. Below that basement membrane, again, is our dermis, which is made of connective tissue, providing those nutrients. Hypodermis, lots of fat, adipose tissue, so made of adipocytes, and lots of blood vessels. Okay. No acid mantle is on there. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, so uh, functions of our skin, so just provides protection and resisting to, for example, being cut. Part of our protection is the acid mantle, so it's the sweat and oil on our skin. It actually creates an acidic environment to prevent bacteria from growing. That doesn't mean don't wash your hands, it just means that it just helps with our um, bodies able to protect itself against those types of pathogens. Um, helps us with water loss prevention, so we'll talk about which layer of the skin does that. Protects against UV radiation, so we'll talk about that too. Harmful chemicals just prevent our body from absorbing stuff. And then lastly, it helps with vitamin... No, it didn't. That's not the last thing. It helps with creating our vitamin D. So our skin uses the sun, which is really particularly just uses the UV radiation. And that helps with our first step of our creating vitamin D. So the skin does the first step, our livers and kidneys finish up the process, and the purpose, one of the purposes of vitamin D is it helps regulate our calcium levels. So we'll actually get into this a little bit more detail of how it does that in chapter seven when we focus on our skeletal system, which is made up of calcium and phosphorus, a bunch of other small uh, minerals. Anyway, okay does a bunch of other stuff help our body against heat loss or being too cold a um, bunch of sensory information there our facial skin muscles as well as other skin muscles are attached to the skin so when they move we're able to make certain gestures so that we can communicate okay okay so for our epidermis, our more superficial layer of the skin. Skin type of cell is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelial. So keratinized, the keratin makes it tougher. We'll talk about that later. Stratified, at least two layers of cells. Squamous, those little flat, fried egg looking type of cells. And then just epithelial tissue. So with our epidermis, it lacks blood vessels. So in order for the cells to get nutri nutrients, it relies on diffusion from our dermis, which is our connective tissue below that basement membrane. So the nutrients go from higher concentration in the dermis to lower concentration in the epidermis. So 
So in our epidermis, we don't just have one cell type, we have five. So first cell type is the stem cells, and these are going to eventually become our skin cells. They just haven't fully developed into that process. When they do, they do become our skin cells called the keratinocytes. And that's what most of our epidermis is made up of. So their job is to create keratin, which is a protein that's going to help to toughen up the upper layers of our skin. Now the type of cell is the melanocytes. They make melanin. So the melanin actually helps protect our skin from UV radiation damage from the sun. So blocks the DNA from getting damaged. Therefore, you don't end up with, or at least helps to prevent your body from getting skin cancer because you had a mutation and now you have a tumor. So another reason why you just add the extra layer of protection with your sunblock. That's my soapbox. Okay. Uh, also having tactile cells, so it helps with our sensory function of the skin. And then lastly, dendritic cells. So our skin is on the outside of the body. So helping our body to fight off any pathogen that might have come into the skin. So let's say you got a cut or something. Those dendritic cells are a type of immune system cell that are going to phagocytize. So they're in a category of cells that are called macrophages. Basically, they eat up stuff. So they take the, let's say if this were a pathogen, they come in, eat it, digest it all up, and the pathogen is no more. So with our epithelial tissue, it has two different types of layers, and really it's just based on one type having an additional layer. So we have thick skin, and we have thin skin. So the thick skin is found on the fronts of our hands. So remembering anatomical position where the palms of your hands are facing outward. So that would be the front or, you know, towards your front. Anyway, so front of your hands and the soles or bottoms of your feet. So with thick skin, it has an extra layer that thin skin does not. And we'll talk about that later. It also has no hair follicles or, nor, or no oil glands. Thin skin is the rest of the body. So thick skin, thin skin. So in thin skin, it has hair, unlike the thick skin, sebaceous or oil glands, as well as sweat glands. Okay, so with our thick versus thin skin, so over here, Miss Thick, we have different stratums called, when basically that's just a fancy word of saying layer. So Starting from our basement membrane, we have our stratum basal layer, stratum spinosum layer, stratum granulosum layer, stratum lucidum, which is not found in thin skin, and then the last one, our dead skin layer, stratum corneum. By the way, this is the picture you need to know for labeling on the exam. So knowing each of our layers, and this is an example of thick skin, as well as knowing that your basement membrane is here at the bottom. So you'll have basement membrane, basal, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and corneum. Okay. So with our different layers of skin, again, thin skin only having four of the layers, thick having the extra fifth layer of skin, we're going to start at our deepest layer with this, our stratum basal layer. So this is the one layer of cells that is connected to our basement membrane. So we have tons of nutrients right nearby coming from our dermis tissue. So you also have a lot of mitosis going on there. You have a bunch of new skin cells being made at that layer. So those new scale cells will migrate toward the surface to replace lost skin cells. So new ones here, born, they push the old ones up towards and away out towards the surface. Eventually they're going to die off because there's just no nutrients enough to keep them alive. Too much of a low concentration of nutrients. Okay, next layer, really thick layer, bunch of keratinocytes. A lot of desmosomes to help keep them connected. Lots of tight junctions to help keep them connected. You also do have your dendritic cells, your immune cells. So that's this layer here. So not much really going on here. 
In the bottom layers, you will have some mitosis because it is close enough to nutrients, but eventually you stop having mitosis because you ah, don't have enough nutrients in order to allow for new daughter cells to be produced. And last three layers. Okay, stratum granosalum layer. So in here, we have granules. In, the, in that layer, these carotohyaline granules will release a protein called filigrin. Filigrin will take the keratin protein that our keratinocytes produce. When that keratin is bundled up, it makes your skin even tougher, so makes that outer layer of your skin so tough that when it dies off, it doesn't just flake off. It stays there. This is why we pay so much for exfoliant in order to scrub off the dead skin cells. But I digress. Next layer, stratum lucidum layer. This is the only layer found in thick skin that's not found in thin skin. So again, this one is found only in thick skin. Don't have a picture for that. So with our stratum lucidum layer, there is a protein there, a clear colored protein, protein called elidin. And because of this layer, it blocks out the melanin in the skin. So other than the places where you have your palm lines and whatnot, where you have deeper connections, I can see melanin on this side and the thin skin side. I don't see it on this side because that protein is blocking the ability to see that. Then the last layer is our stratum corneum layer. So this one is where your skin cells have finally given up. There's not enough nutrients to keep them alive. Organelles start to fail. They die off. And because of that bundled up keratin protein, bundled up by the filigrin, that makes the outer layers tough and they just stay there. So you have multiple layers of dead skin cells on the outside of your cell, outside of your skin. Okay, so let's look at what happens to a keratinocyte when it goes from the stratum basal layer to the upper stratum corneum layer, or more superficial stratum corneum layer. Okay, so mitosis, new keratinocytes, either in the stratum basal layer, so our bottom layer, or in the deeper parts of our stratum spinosum. So again, enough nutrients in order to make one. The newer daughter cells or newer keratinocytes push the older ones up towards the surface. So it kind of pushes them out the way. Eventually, as they keep going up in layers, they'll flatten so you get that squamish shape of those cells. Eventually, about 30 to 40 days. Let's go back. Okay, over time they flatten. They'll produce more keratin that makes the upper layers more tough. It also produces membrane coating vesicles. We'll talk about that later. And takes about 30, 40 days to go from the stratum basal layer to the point where they do exfoliate. So when they're, you do lose some skin cells, but you do also keep a bunch of them. Um, in areas where you have a lot of touching, where you're grabbing stuff, particularly if you're more handsy or if you're on your feet a lot, you'll end up having, instead of the skin exfoliating because it's compacted because you're gripping on stuff, that causes calluses or corn, corn, corns. So this is just extra layers of those dead ter keratinocytes. Okay, so uh, this is one of your study guide questions, so pay attention. All of this is on the study guide, but just saying. Anyway, so in our stratum granosalum layer, so we're almost close toward the top. So we've gone basal, we've gone spinosum, granosalum layer. So this is where you have the carotohyaline granules. So granules in this layer, they're going to release filigrin to bundle up your keratin. Makes the outer layers more tough. You also release envelope proteins, making things more tough. The membrane coating vesicles, those are releasing a lipid mixture and that helps waterproof skin. So this is the layer where your skin is waterproof that helps us to prevent the loss of water from the body, but it also prevents us from absorbing water. So no matter how many times you put on the fancy schmancy lotion, it's not getting past uh, this layer. So some of the oils might um, be able to pass through, but 
anything, any lotion that's water-based, all you're doing is just making all the ash on the outside of your skin, just moisturizing that. That's it. That's not, you're not getting too far deep into your skin. No matter how many times that anti-aging cream says it has collagen to get into the deeper parts of your skin so you don't get, so you can get rid of wrinkles. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Okay. So, with this stratum granosum layer tight junctions, we have our membrane coating vesicles releasing lipid to waterproof the skin. The waterproofing, again, pre prevents dehydration, so lack of water loss. But again, absorption of water is prevented. So when, oh well, duh, my hands aren't are dry. But let's say you hang out in the bathtub too long or hang out in a pool too long or at the lake um, and your fingers get all wrinkly. And that's because your stratum well, in this case, since it is the palm of the hand area and the side as well, those fingers, thick skin, the stratum corneum layer and the stratum granosum layer, they'll absorb water. But because of this waterproof layer in the stratum granosum, it will not absorb water. And so you have more surface area that's still attached to these lower areas of skin. And so you end up with... And this one doesn't have the lucidum layer in here, so this is be a thick skin layout. So you have absorption here, non-absorption here. So all of this has more area, and so that's what wrinkles up because it's still attached to the deeper layers. Okay, so life history of keratinocyte in one slide, just getting your main points going from our stratum basal layer up through stratum corneum. Thighs get old, so away from your stratum basal layer, the nutrients are too low, and so the cells will die off. This is how you end up with dead cells in the stratum corneum layer. Okay, this should be going on to dermis. Yes, it is. All right, so dermis tissue. So this is the connective tissue layer under the basement membrane supporting our epidermis tissue. Here it is, connective tissue. Most of our dermis is collagen. So with those beauty products that are talking about collagen, that's where they're focused on. Like it's actually going to help, but oh well. So that collagen is what gives the structure and support of our skin. So when it breaks down, that's why you end up with wrinkles partially. Okay, so in our dermis tissue, lots of blood vessels. That's where we're getting our nutrients in order to feed our epidermis. So our nutrients go from high to low concentration towards our epidermis. Um, we do have the nail roots and hair follicles. That's where they start in our dermis tissue. Um, we also have other glands there, sweat and oil hanging out in there. So sebaceous being oil. With our dermis tissue, it has a very wavy or easily seen boundary. So conspicuous is the fancy term for that. So something that is easily seen. There's your vocab lesson for the day. With so that boundary with the epidermis actually helps to keep your two layers together. So they link between each other and that keeps them from being able to just slide off of each other. Okay, so those little wavy extensions, we have the dermal papillae. Those are the upward-like finger extensions from the dermis. The epidermal ridges are the downward-like extensions from the epidermis. So that locks them in place where it's very prominent, where you have a really super deep uh, connection between the two, that's where you have our friction ridges creating our fingerprints. Where it's super, super deep, that's where you get your lines to read for a palm reading. Not that I'm into that, but just saying. Okay. So in your dermis tissue, you have two different layers. You have your papillary layers, where your little finger extensions are. It's loosely packed in that area so you have a lot of your leukocytes or your white blood cells hanging out there um, and other defense cells so they're able to move through a bunch of little small blood vessels deeper layers your reticular layer so a lot of reticular fibrous proteins um, so dense irregular connective tissue so are more compact um, if you damage this layer that's what ends up with the stretch marks so again with dermis tissue the repair is fibrosis, so you just had a bunch of collagen fibers that were replaced in that area. 
So just showing you the difference between dermis and epi, sorry, between the papillary and reticular layers. So papillary more loosely and randomly organized for our reticular layer more compact of our structure. Forgot about that, but yeah. So we can see a difference between here, papillary layer, reticular layer. All of this is our epidermis. So we can see those extensions where they lock between each other. Okay, and we're going to stop here, moving on to the hypodermis for the next video.